Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We bless your name for your goodness. And we thank you because you brought us together for a good purpose. And we pray, Lord, you bless your people. Strengthen your people. Show us the way we ought to go. And we pray, Lord, that vision will not die. The power to keep on doing your work, you give to every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. We are coming to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 17. Ezekiel chapter 3, looking at verse 17. It tells us in verse 17 about the call, the commission, the commandment of the Lord for Ezekiel and beyond Ezekiel for you and for me. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Here Ezekiel was given the commission of a prophet. We have the commission of pastors, leaders, soul winners, evangelists, preachers of the world. And that's the reason why we're looking at this passage. It's a passage familiar to quite a number of us. I will say to all of us. We know we have a special task. Which yields eternal dividends. An important task. Which saves souls from eternal suffering. A specific task. Which makes the sacrifice of Christ redemptive that is christ has died for everyone for every sinner but it is our task of taking that message what calvary has provided the redemption of the lord taking it to the people it is telling them that actually makes a sacrifice of jesus christ redemptive we have a task it's a worthy task which fulfills the reason for our existence on earth here we have a task and it is a rewardable task which causes joy in heaven a profitable task that grants us heaven's approval and favor we have a task it is a compassionate task that will reveal god's grace to perishing unworthy sinners such a task the lord has committed into our hands and i pray the lord will help us to see how important how exalted and how profitable the task is and what we'll do everything he has called us to do in this life we live in jesus name there are encumbering preoccupations which hinder the most important task as we look at our church looking at the ministers and looking at them and the members as we look at the leaders and the workers and the members of the church nobody will tell us that the polite members and ministers and workers and leaders are lazy idle indolent people no not at all we're busy but then sometimes we're preoccupied with things that encumber our lives and make us to leave this important task. You see, there are religious commitments which negate Christ's passionate demand. There are costly services and sacrifices which profit no soul in eternity. They're just religious, religious activities. And that's the reason we need to examine our own activities, our own lives, our ministries, and all the preoccupations to know what we're occupied in. Actually, there are unassigned, dissipating activities that weaken us for the real soul-saving ministry. Our energy is dissipated. Our skill is weakened. And we don't have the real direction we ought to go because there are earthly pursuits which make many prospects miss heaven. Regrettable neglects which incurs God's rebuke and God's wrath. And these 
a pitiable devotions of many in the church in the church at large and sorry to say even some in our church that's why we must wake up and recover ourselves and be unwaveringly committed to this urgent task we will do it i said we're going to do it tonight we're looking at our most important task commitment to our most important task it's a task it's an important task it's the most important task and therefore we need to bring all our energy all our resources everything we've got into this great work that the lord has called us to there are three things we're looking at number one the mandate for his representatives the mandate we're representing him representing christ representing a redeemer representing a savior representing the one that says i come or i came to seek and to save the lost he has given us now the work he has given us the challenge if he were on earth he'll be spending every day and every moment of every day in preaching the gospel and bringing sinners into the kingdom of god but now he's not here he has chosen us as representatives and he gives us a mandate point number two the minister and his Re redemptive response the minister and his redemptive response as he gives us the mandate and he says i've called you he says i've commissioned you he says i charge you he says this is the work i've given to you we need to respond in a redemptive way that our response will then reach out and go to preach the word to those who are waiting the minister and his redemptive response point number three the magnitude of our responsibility the magnitude of our responsibility if we don't know what our responsibilities are and we do not know the analysis and the ramifications of those uh, responsibilities will not be able to do them very well that's why we need to understand the magnitude of that work the size of that work the extent of that work the different aspects and areas of that work the magnitude of our responsibility we're coming to number one give me number one the mandate for his representatives we're coming to ezekiel again chapter three ezekiel chapter three i'm reading from verse 17 son of man i have made thee a watchman unto the house of israel therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me the lord said ezekiel I have made thee. The religious society, religious group of Israel might not make him a watchman. They might not recognize him. They might not ordain him. Many years ago, there was such a noise in this country, in some areas, as to are you ordained? Are you not ordained? Have you gone to Bible school? Have you not gone to Bible school? Have you got this? Have you got that? But the Lord said, Ezekiel, don't listen to them. Whatever they say, whether they recognize you or not, I, the Almighty God, have made you my representative and I've given you a charge, a commission. I have raised you up for this one purpose that you'll hear the word from my mouth and then you'll give them warning for me. Look at verse 18 when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. When I say, he says it, but the sinner cannot hear him directly. The Almighty God declares the word, he declares the truth, but the people cannot hear directly, and it is the representative of the Lord that will bring the word unto them. Jesus Christ died for the whole world. 
and he's speaking to the whole world today but the world cannot hear him that's why he puts you there that's why he puts me there and he makes us his representatives when he says this will happen to the sinner we are to take that word that is saying to the sinner and we're to give it to the sinner when i say in verse 18 unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning no speakers to warn the wicked of his way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at your hand does that surprise you shouldn't surprise you at all let's say for example you see a house is uh, on fire you see the smoke and then you just stay outside and you stand at roof and you fold your hand and the people inside they're sleeping they couldn't wake up and they all die even sinners will condemn you and the law will condemn you and the judge will condemn you and the courts of the land will condemn you the same thing spiritually it says when i say to the wicked it will surely die and you know that word and you know that god means what he says and he says what he means you don't give him warning and you're just looking at him you see him every day you come across him every time you even see him in your local church and you know his life you know that he's not born again you know he's not a child of god you know if he dies in this condition he's going to go to hell you take tithes and offering from him you take money from him you even tell him to come and do some work when we're doing physical work in the church you tell him to contribute for retreat you tell him to do this or that but you know you know that he's not living right you know that where he's working is not working well you know that he's a, you know he's a dubious person a fraudulent person a wicked person a terrible sinner you know all that you take his money and then you might even you know he has a school you even send your child to school and you're very familiar with him and you never tell him you never open your mouth the sinner who dies in sin will go to hell you might have your reason why you shut your mouth but god says his blood will i require at your hand are we even talking of our service about the people that are living with you you employ them is your maid or is your servant or is doing whatever with you or is your employee and he respects you he looks up to you he listens to you in everything he would even bring the case of his family to you and say a hey, boss master or whoever look at this and look at this you give them advice advice minus salvation advice minus the new birth advice minus repentance advice minus the grace of god you never tell them how they can be saved if they die in their sin it says their blood will i require at your hand verse 19 yet if thou want the wicked and he turned not from his wickedness stop there for a moment sometimes that's an excuse those people they're not going to listen that's not your problem that's in their hands that's their decision that's their responsibility are they not going to lose it tell them oh those people they are thugs those people they're dangerous people those people they, they, they have made up their minds they're going to hell and to hell they will go the lord says whether they will hear whether they will not hear whatever it is it says it's your responsibility tell them i will tell them i said i will tell them it says, yet if the one, the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, not from the wicked, from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. And, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Look up for a moment. I'm saved for a minister. That's not enough. I thank God there's no sin in my life for a minister. That's not enough. I believe I'm sanctified and holy for a preacher. That's not enough. My heart does not condemn me for anything. I know that I'm going to heaven. If I died today, I know I will go to heaven. Don't say that yet. To him that knows to do good and does not do it to him, it is tell me out loud. It is sin. You know that sinner is going to hell and you never talk. That's holiness. That's love. That's kindness. That's compassion. 
you are irresponsible because you know that this is a sinner and the Lord says the soul that sinneth it shall die you never open your mouth to tell them it is when you tell them and you tell them passionately and you tell them earnestly and you tell them with all your heart warning them even with tears weeping if they don't repent their blood will be upon them if they repent what a joy there'll be in your soul and joy in heaven where god's appointed watchmen our mandate is clear there's no maybe about it but or perhaps about it it's clear our commission is divine it's not earthly it is supernatural it is divine this is what god has given us our responsibility is well spelt out go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature our penalty is frightening if we are negligent our penalty a punishment a recompense a suffering is frightening if we are negligent our duty has been redefined well defined very clearly our destiny depends on our faithfulness and the charge is for a lifetime the charge is for a lifetime think about that the charge the commission what the lord has given us is for a lifetime think about that you're a human being you live in this community and you're not in the department of firefighting uh, employees or workers but you're just walking on the way and then you see a house burning and somebody tells you can you do something can you call on the phone and call the fire people to come and put up this oh he says i'm sorry i've retired i just retired last month and see, no, we don't retire from this. You see somebody suffering. We don't retire from that. You're going on the way. You see somebody that fell into a ditch and is crying for help. Help, help. And there you are. You have your two hands. You have your two feet. You are strong. And then you hear the cry. Somebody says, let's join hands together. I cannot do it alone. Let us rescue him. Oh, you say, I'm sorry. I just, uh, you know, I just took vacation, uh, you know, last week. And I'm still on vacation now. We don't take vacation on this one. This one is for a lifetime. This one is forever. Here is the work the Lord has committed into our hands. And it says we we'll keep on doing this and doing this until the end of the world. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. If you don't, you are guilty. If you close your eyes to the uh, plight of the perishing people, you're guilty. And the punishment is going to come. If you see somebody backsliding and you say, well, I'm not his pastor. You see somebody backsliding, I'm not his preacher. You see somebody backsliding, he's older than I am. And he came to the gospel before me. And it is not my place to tell him. It's like, you know, somebody has a bottle of poison. And he's going to drink it unknowingly. He doesn't know. And the thing is going to kill him and destroy him. And then you look at him, he's taller than I am. He's more educated than I am. And he's older than I am. And he has, uh, in fact, he knows much more than I do. And so, if he drinks that and he dies, he, he knows more than I know. Whatever their position, and whatever their authority, and whatever their possession, you will tell them. If you don't tell them, you'll be guilty. I will not be guilty of anybody's blood. I can't hear my people. Well, tell them in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we we'll become so careless and we we'll become uh, so unscriptural and so spiritual and so carnal that sometimes we even see our relations, somebody very close to us, they're doing something that we know in the Bible that they should not be done. This is a real sin, a terrible sin. And if this person dies in this condition, there is no, there is no peace and there is no, and there is no rest for him in eternity. But you know, they will not hear from my mouth that it is so and so. 
that did such and such. They'll not hear from my mouth that he is the backslider. They'll not hear from my mouth that he was a sinner. Will not hear from you, but you will hear from the mouth of God. You are condemned. We need to wake up. I said we need to wake up. I said we need to wake up. This over carefulness. I'll not talk because I don't want them to mention my name. I will not challenge anybody. I don't want them to mention my name. I will not correct anything. I don't want them to mention my name. I will not stir them up. I will not awaken them. I don't want anybody to mention my name. We're getting to the point where we see people get into the ditch and get to the brink of hell. And then we cannot talk. You will talk. I said you will talk. John the Baptist did not keep quiet. You will not keep quiet. Look at Matthew chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 7. It tells us in Matthew chapter 3 verse 7. It says, but when is so many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you? To flee from the rot to come. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. He told them, he challenged them. And this man, he was all alone. If you think about John the Baptist, look up here for a moment. It wasn't like, you know, like you are. You are, you are a pastor. You have a good pastor. You have a region overseer. You have a state overseer. And when you are discovered, you have somebody to pick you up. If you are in the prison, somebody to visit you. If you have any need, somebody to help you. John the Baptist did not have anybody like that, any supporter like that. He was the lone preacher. And yet he told them, they, you know the Pharisees, so you know the Sadducees, they even plotted the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew they could do quite a lot. There are people that are now over careful. They will hurt me. They will destroy me. They will affect my business. They'll make life difficult and tough for me. If I tell them that this is the wrong way you are going and this is the way to perdition, they have the power to hurt me and to destroy me. They're so careful. They're so careful. They want to save their lives and that life is being lost. But John the Baptist he said, I have a commission. I have a charge. I have a commandment. I have something the Lord has called me to do. I will be faithful. Somebody there, I will be faithful. Tell me out loud, I will be faithful. Let the Lord hear your voice, I will be faithful. So he challenged them and told them, Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and seek not to say, Within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, God is able of these stones of the Gentiles to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the, tell me, into the fire. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, or reading from verse 11. It says in verse 11, knowing therefore, the terror of the Lord, knowing therefore the wrath of God, knowing therefore the judgment of the Lord, knowing therefore the eternal perdition of the sinners who die in their sins or repentant, it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, we persuade men, we run after them, we reach out to them because we have to persuade them to come out of their sin. Look at verse 18. And all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation to which that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us. What? 
the word of reconciliation. We're calling them to reconcile with God. Look at verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you, we plead with you. In Christ's stead, shout it out. Be ye reconciled unto God. That's the ministry has given us, and we're going to fulfill it in Jesus' name. I come to point number two, the minister and his redemptive response. The minister and his redemptive response. We're coming to Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Here we're now reading from verse 20. Again, when the righteous man does turn from his righteousness. When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness. You see, there are people that on paper, they don't believe once saved, always saved. You know, there are teachers in our midst, preachers in our midst, pastors in our midst. Theoretically, they know somebody can backslide and they know that if a believer backslides and he dies in sin, if he dies in that condition, he'll go to hell. They believe that in the head, theoretically. But when it comes to practical life, when it comes to you and I seeing each other, when it comes to looking at people, he says he's a believer, He's got money from that, money from that, money from that, as if he's a local bank. And then he's sowing thousands of uh, naira, and he's sowing so many people, and he's still a preacher. And his group pastor will know that this is it. They have brought reports to him that this man is like this, this woman is like this, and that group pastor does nothing about it. He believes eternal security. Because it's like that man, we made him a pastor, he's a pastor. We made him a preacher, he's a preacher. He's a righteous man. Even though we know he's rotting life today, yet they leave him there. They are afraid of, you know, I don't want to get involved in this discipline business. Well, take that. They say they are waiting for the GS. GS is the only one that, you know, he doesn't care whether you, you know, talk against him or you draw him, you drive him, you pull him, you push him, whatever. He's going to do what he needs to do. I'm not like that. You're not like me. Then you're not my student. Then you're not my follower. Then you are not, I'm not mentoring you. If I'm mentoring you, you will do what I will do. You will stand like I will stand. Somebody there will stand. Amen. You will stand in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, sometimes it's uh, one, you know, in the, in the past, we used to have uh, these uh, faithful uh, sisters. You know, they know that their husbands are not living right. I'm not talking about anybody there. If I'm just pointing like this and my hand, uh, you know, appears to point to you, don't dodge. I'm not talking about you. I said, don't dodge. Are you there for me? You know, sometimes the wives will know that things are not getting, you, they are not, all, are not uh, all right at home. The husband will slap them, will beat them, will get angry, will kick and all that. And then uh, if you report in the church and they stop me from the work I am doing, because the work, they think the work will take them to heaven while they are fighting, while they are drinking. What they are doing evil things. What they are impregnating the maids at home. They think the work will take them to heaven. If you report me and they stop me, this marriage will break. My friend, if you want to break your marriage, break your marriage, but don't stop, but don't spoil our church. Come and tell the church you are not living right. You are not qualified to preach. If you are not doing that, let the wife come out. And let the wife tell our group pastors, this man is not living right. 
And because we know it's not living right, he doesn't, even, even me, as I go to church and I listen to the man, I don't pay attention because I know the way he lives at home. If the man cannot influence his wife in the preaching that he does, is he going to influence anybody? If the children cannot listen to him, is he going to influence anybody? We must come now with a responsive, a redemptive response and say, this is the word of God, we'll stand by the word of God. I said, we'll stand by the word of God. And so that's why it says, when I say to a righteous man that, sh that, 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 that he commits iniquity and I, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And then he says, his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? It's righteousness. I was saved. Historical salvation. 19 such and such, I was saved. 2000 such and such, I was saved. But is it historical? It is not real today. It is not relevant today. It is not visible today. It is not something we see today. When I say to a righteous man, that will surely live. If that righteous man, if he trusts in his righteousness, and then he does iniquity, and he goes to the other side, and he backslides, if you don't want him, look at this, his blood will I require at thine hand. We'll warn everybody. I said we'll warn everybody. Look at verse 21, nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, if thou want the righteous man, if thou want the righteous man, the one who says I'm saved, want him in his office. As all those things are going on in his office, want him. Don't take part in those things. As you see the things that are going on in society, you want that righteous man. Do you say you are saved? Do you say you are born again? Do you say you are a child of God? Remain saved and be an uncompromising believer anywhere you are. Nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because his word, and thou hast delivered thy soul. Give me a good day. Amen. That's what the Lord expects. The Lord expects us that we stand on the word of God and that for the sinner we tell them they need to repent and come to know the Lord and believe the gospel. And when that salvation comes to him, there's a change of life. There's a change of disposition. There's a change of attitude. There's a change of direction. If any man be in Christ, tell me the rest. It's a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, and behold, and behold, all things have become new. That's the word he has given us. And that's the response we ought to have with the people. That's what we need to tell them. We're looking at Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading here from verse 12 and verse 13. Here are the words of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 24. And here we're reading from, let's back up to verse 11. It says in verse 11, And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You see the warning? You see what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying? But he's saying, we need to warn them so that they will recover their false love. In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, we're reading verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2 and we're reading from verses 4 and 5 revelation chapter 2 verse 4 nevertheless i have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick from his place except thou repent i pray or we'll keep on preaching the right message in jesus name the watchfulness of the watchman is redemptive if he sleeps or slumbers there's danger if he's careless or negligent there's danger 
if he is weak or feeble a watchman a watchman that ought to be watching everything watching everywhere watching the lives of the people watching the profession of the people watching the character of the people if he's feeble and weak and if he doesn't have any backbone if he cannot stand for conviction there's danger the people is watching over they'll be lost if he's busy here and there if he loses sight or loses strength if he shifts focus or concentration lives will be lost souls will perish sinners will suffer eternal punishment and saints will backslide and the church will become defiled that's why the lord is telling us that what we'll do we need to do what he has called us to do we'll do it in jesus name we're looking at uh, first uh, as first timothy first timothy chapter four in first timothy chapter four verses 15 and 16 first timothy chapter four verses 15 and 16 meditate upon these things give thyself holy to them that thy prophet him may appear unto all take heed unto thyself yourself yourself your own life take heed unto yourself your quiet time your daily devotion your application of the bible to yourself your self-examination and making sure that you are standing spiritually every time every moment take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee that means it's not automatic i'm a preacher not automatic to get to heaven you take care of yourself take care of your life and you watch over your life watch over your ministry and watch over the people the lord has given you in second timothy chapter 4 verse 1 Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word preach the word preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when he will not endure sound doctrine the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lost, shall they heed to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and be turned unto fables, storytelling. But, tell me, watch thou in all things. Tell me what follows. Tell me out loud. Say that again endure afflictions there are afflictions connected with the ministry of the watchman there are difficulties connected with the ministry of the watchman there are persecutions connected with the ministry of the watchman there are hindrances connected with the ministry of the watchman if you are a person an effeminate person a person that cannot bear the insults of the people the assaults of the people the challenges from the people if you're a person that cannot bear the opposition the persecution from the people if you're a person that cannot bear the talk 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 gossips of the people you will not do what you ought to do there are afflictions persecutions opposition difficulties associated with the ministry of the watchman but the person that says i have a call from god anybody there you have a call from god I have a commission from the lord anybody there you have a commission from the lord then you look away from all the difficulties and the challenges you will suffer get ready 
They will talk about you get ready. He is a rigid man. He is the know all. He is the one that is always, if they say oh at the headquarters, he says oh. He doesn't know how to change anything. He doesn't know how to modify anything. He doesn't know how to, you know, at least use your own common sense and understand. If they send you to, you know, with this message, you should understand and have the wisdom not to modify. He doesn't know how to do that. They'll talk against you, but keep on standing. I said, keep on standing. And the Lord will give you the grace to stand until the very end in Jesus' name. It says in verse 5, but watch thou in all things, and dear afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of your ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. You will do this work, and you will succeed in Jesus' name. This work will prosper in your hands. The courage of the preacher, the backbone of the preacher, and the stamina of the uncompromising watchman, the Lord will give every one of us in Jesus' name. But you know, we need to know what to do. What am I to do as a watchman? And watch at the responsibilities of the watchman. The magnitude of that responsibility. That brings me to point number three. Here is where you need to pay attention. Because now the Lord is going to give us an outline of the work we need to do. The height of the work. The breadth of the work. The greatness of the work. The magnitude of the work and the analysis of the word that it says here is what you do here is the commission i have given you and you need to check make a check a check the list that the lord is giving you the watchman i'm going to use the letters of that word watchman to make it easy for you to remember actually if you if you know how to you know in teaching we do all these things it's not because i just want to do them it's because it helps our memory it helps our brain it helps the connections we have with everything we're doing i can remember okay the watchman what does that mean w there is to warn to warn a is to awaken you sound an alarm. You alert them. And you are waking them. T is to teach. Testify and travail. You teach. If you're a watchman, you have to look at their lives. You teach the sinner the way to salvation. You teach the believer how to stand and to stand firm to the very end. C is to confront to convict, to caution, to correct, to convince. See, you confront them. If you don't confront sinners, how do they know that they are sinning? If you are, I will not be confrontational. I'll just be like a wise person, a wise worldly man. You see another person, you see them, they are drunk. You see them, they are violent. You see them, they are fraudulent. And then you, are, you see them, they are corrupt. And you're asking them, my friend, is your friend? The violent man, my friend? The drunkard, my friend? The wife beater, my friend? Confront them. Let them know. The soul that sinners, tell me, it shall die. See there, you confront, you convict, you caution, you correct, you convince. H, you hope, you have to give them hope. You haste, you have to make haste. You harvest, harvest them into the kingdom. You hold forth the word of truth, the word of life. M, make mention of them in your prayers. Make mention in your prayers M mold their character M monitor them you convert you monitor them you see if you're a watchman you're watching over them you're monitoring them did you have your quiet time have you truly repented what change has come in your life and have you made your restitution how is your relationship now with people around you you monitor them I was still going to a nightclub. I was still doing this or that. And then you mentor them. A, 
assure them ascertain ask questions ask questions alert and adapt what are teaching to their level of understanding and names known you have to know their names and needs addressed you have to address their spiritual needs and nothing withheld i held nothing back that is profitable unto you and news from afar get to your bible and get news good news from heaven for these people that when they hear you as you are watching over them they're excited they're alive and then new life and new strength comes unto them and neglect avoided you avoid negligence negligence avoided and nourish them as a watchman as a watchman that to warn them we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts of the apostles chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 31 acts of the apostles chapter 20 verse 31 here's what it tells us here is Paul the Apostle. In fact, as you look at Paul the Apostle, he's our model, he's our master preacher of the New Testament, and he demonstrates for us the ministry of the watchman. And we're going to look at all these references now concerning the ministry of Paul the Apostle as a watchman. Look at this. In Acts chapter 20, I'm reading from verse, which verse is that now? touch one i know it i just wanted to test you uh, look at this it says therefore watch therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years i cease not to warn every everyone night and days with tell me with tears weep weep over them weep over the airy ones so then we understand that a watchman is the one that warns is the one who weaves over them is the one who witnesses to the people is the one who wins them to the lord is the one who wins them from the world that word win winning from the world that is w-e-a-n the, the a watchman is one who weighs them and you are weighed and found wanting look at this verse look at this verse look at this verse as you are pointing the verses to them you are weighing them in the balances of god this uh, watchman is the one that teaches them with good warning so as to prepare them for heaven we're looking at colossians chapter one colossians chapter one i'm reading from verse 28 Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, it says, Who will preach? Warning how many people? I can't hear you. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. A, awaken them, alarm them, announce to them admonish them and affirm the truth in their lives affirm the truth before them don't shy away from the truth here is the truth of life eternal here is how to get to heaven and you are waking their dead conscience you are waking the one that is sleeping that's how to be a watchman it tells us in Ephesians Ephesians I'm reading here from chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. Look at the word of God here. It says, Wherefore he says, Awake that the sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Talking to the unbelievers who are sleeping in sin, 
who are slumbering in sin, who just give themselves, abandon themselves to their sins. It says, awake, awake, because the time of the end is very near. A watchman will warn the people. A watchman will awaken the people. It's not only the sinners you want to awake, you want to awaken also. Even those who are believers, we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 34. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're looking at verse 34. The, the people who say they're believers and they do not know so ever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he's born of God. The people who say they're born again and they do not know that we know that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not. The people are ignorant that we're called unto a land life of righteousness you're waking them that's the work that's the ministry that's the assignment that's the duty of the watchman in first corinthians chapter 15 verse 34 look at what is this a way to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You know, I was speaking to those people that say they have the gifts of the Spirit. We have this, we have that. I said, awake to righteousness. How Paul had a good conviction. And he had backbone. And he warned the people as a faithful watchman ought to do. T, teach them. T, testify unto them. T, travail on their behalf. T, thunder the warnings unto them. T, raise your voice like a trumpet. T, tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Don't hide anything. And don't hide behind any excuse because of the fear of man that brings us near. But you teach them. You testify unto them, and you travail in prayer for them, and you raise your voice like that of a thunder, and then you make it like a trumpet so that they will hear, because you're interested for them to know the truth. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. I'm reading from verses 20 and 21. Acts, chapter 20. Verses 20 and 21. It says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly. Teaching, teaching. The watchman, you teach them. I've taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying. You testify. Testify unto them. Here is the word of truth. Here is the word of life. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says in verse, in verse 24, but none of these things move me. Afflictions will come. Opposition will come. Persecution will come. Insults and assaults will come. Gossips will come. It says, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord to, tell me the word, tell me out loud, testify the gospel of the grace of God. See, confront them. Confront them. This man fearing heart must be transformed. This heart, you know, man fearing disposition, always looking down, cannot confront people, cannot look at people because they are bringing something out of their pocket, because they're trying to demonstrate something, because they're trying to wave something, and cannot stand as God's appointed watchman for the hour and say, hear the word of the Lord. All that kind of timidity, everything will vanish away from you. And the intimidation, the people you are to take, you take them, you take them by the hand, you 
say I come as a representative of the Almighty and I come to show you the way to heaven and that heaven you will get there and you confront them you say but you know this will hinder you that will hinder you that will hinder you it is that confrontation and even the believers the believers so want to become careless and then they want to become the lords of their own lives and they want to they, they don't be, have respect for the word of God you go to them you approach them you say my friend you know what you're a believer you're a member of this church here is what we stand for here is what the Bible stands for you will stand in Jesus name somebody there said you'll stand in Jesus name look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 2 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 2 it says but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty and what not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God were deceitfully but man, by the manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience every man's conscience in the fear in the sight of God confront them confront them convict them too and make sure that they come under conviction we're coming to Galatians chapter 2 verse 14 caution them caution them caution them warn them caution them that they say the way to perdition and they say the way to hell they must repent they must turn fully completely entirely totally and submit absolutely unto the lord in galatians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 14 galatians chapter 2 verse 14 it says in verse 14 but when i saw that they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel i said unto peter before them all if thou being a Jew, liveth after the manner of Gentiles, not and not after do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? He confronted Peter. He said, When I saw, they didn't walk uprightly. When I saw, they didn't behave the way they ought to behave. I confronted them. You convict, you confront, you caution. You correct, you convince. Each, give them hope. But in giving the hope, you're not telling them lies. You're not deceiving them. You're not perpetrating false doctrine. You're holding forth the word of truth. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. And I'm reading here from verse 14. And verse 15, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, I will read him from verse 14, but this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God. That's it. The hope of life eternal. That if they repent, the Lord will forgive. That if they repent, the Lord will turn the judgment away from them. That if they call on his only begotten son who died on the cross of Calvary, he will take their sins away. And then peace of the peace of God will come to them. Uh, look at uh, ch uh, Philippians chapter 2. You are holding forth not false doctrine you're not encouraging a sinner that well everything will be all right you're not encouraging a backslider everything will be all right you're telling them here is the word of the lord in philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse i'm reading from verse 16 holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain and so we understand the watchman he wants the people. Sometimes he has to want them with tears. And he witnesses. And he wins them to the Lord. And he wins them from the world. He weighs them in the balance of the word of God. And he holds, he withholds nothing from them. He, he awakens them. He sounds the alarm. He announces the word. He admonishes them. He affirms the truth. Tea. He teaches. He testifies, he travails, he thunders, 
Like a trumpet, he does not give an uncertain sound. He tells the truth. See, he convicts them, he confronts them, he cautions them, he corrects them, he convinces them. Age, he gives them hope. But they sold him forth the watch of truth. M, mulch their character. M, monitor them. M, mentor them. M, make mention of them in your prayers. Make mention of them in your prayers. That the Lord will help them. The Lord will hold them up. The Lord will strengthen them. The Lord will empower them. The Lord will give them abundant, sufficient grace to stand. And to stand, as they ought to stand, uncompromisingly. Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 9. It says, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. That's part of the work. That's part of the responsibility. That's part of the duty of the watchman. After you have done everything you ought to do, you go to the Lord in prayer and you make mention of them by name. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 1. Here we're reading from verse 16. Ephesians 1 verse 16. Are you there? I said, are you there? Okay, read it out to me then. Okay, some of you are there. Look at this. Cease not to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. A, assure them. Assure them. A, ascertain. Where do they stand? That's why Paul the Apostle is St. Timothy to Thessalonica because he wants to be sure at they still standing. Ascertain. Not only that, ask them questions. Not only that, answer their questions. And as you ask them questions and they respond, you're able to position them and pinpoint where they are. You're able to say he understands. He has conviction. He's overcoming temptation. He's standing for the truth. You have to ascertain where they are. And you have to assure, assure them. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're reading verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all, tell me, they'll deliver you. I said they'll deliver you. Out of them all, the Lord delivered me, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Look at this. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been, tell me the word, assured of, assured of. You know, Paul the Apostle, he chilled that Timothy when he was young in the faith. He kept on teaching him. He kept on solidifying the knowledge that he had. He kept on affirming the truth that he had until Timothy became assured. And that's what you do to the converts. That's what you do to the babes in Christ. Make them understand until they're sure. And he says, thou hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And then he tells um, all those Corinthians, he adapted the message of the word of God to them. And names are known. Do you see Paul the Apostle? If you look at the end of Romans, and that's chapter 16, you see all those names there. He knew their names. He was a watchman over them. How can you watch over a property? You don't even know the address of that place, the number of that house. And you say, I'm the watchman over that house. You're watching over a particular car. You don't even know the make, and you don't know the number. 
and you're watching over some children you don't even know their names and you don't know where they come from and you say you're watching over the converts names are not known if you're watching over those converts names known needs addressed nothing was held and you are getting news from afar to develop them and to help them to strengthen them and negligence will be avoided we're looking at um, acts of the apostles chapter 20 verse 20 acts chapter 20 reading from verse 20 nothing withheld nothing you know, withheld it tells us acts chapter 20 verse 20 how i kept nothing back how i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you and it says but i have showed you i've demonstrated to you i've revealed to you i've explained to you i've expounded to you and i've taught you publicly and from house to house and in that way, you are nourishing them. You nourish them in the word of truth, in the word of life. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 6. First Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Are you there? Yeah. You'll be a good minister in Jesus' name. A good watchman in Jesus' name. Nourished up. Nourished up. Nourished up in the words of faith. And of good doctrine. Whereunto thou hast attained. You see what the Lord has called us to today. And you see the ramifications and the explanations and the expansion of the word. And you see the analysis of what it means when it says, Son of man, I've made you a watchman over the house of Israel. You hear the word from my mouth and you give them warning from me. What I say to a wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not warn him, he shall die in his iniquities wickedness but his blood will I require at your hand but if you want him and he does not uh, repent he does not turn from his iniquity he will die in his iniquity but you have saved yourself you are free you will not be just because of that when I speak to a righteous man that thou shall surely live if he trusts in his righteousness and then he does iniquity like the wicked man I is a righteousness I will not remember in the sin that he has committed in there will he die but if you want him you have saved yourself and the Lord has now put that ministry in your hand and in my hand you'll be a good watchman you'll be a vigilant watchman you'll be a fruitful watchman and you'll be a fervent watchman you will warn you will weep your witness your win you win them for the all you weigh them in the balances and you will awaken them alert them alarm them and announce the word unto them affirm them and you will teach them you'll testify to them you'll travail for them you'll raise your voice like a trumpet you'll convict them and confront them you'll caution them you'll correct them you will convince them you hold for the word of life you harvest them into the kingdom and then you go back home you are praying for them you are monitoring them you are mentoring them and you are molding them you are making mention of them in prayer you are assuring them and you are telling them here is the way walk ye therein you know their names you know their needs you are holding nothing away from them you are not negligent about them you are nourishing them in the watch of God and if you keep Keep on doing this faithfully until Christ will come. Many will be the people that will stand firm because of your ministry in Jesus' name. And then you and them, them and yourself, you'll get to heaven at last in Jesus' name. And when Jesus comes to call his son away, and the dead rise up, and then we which are like we're caught up together with them, you'll be there, I'll be there. 
they'll be there, your converts will be there. And a militant church, a triumphant church, a great church in righteousness will be there together in Jesus' name. We need to take all this to the Lord in prayer that God will help you, that God will help us, that He'll strengthen us, He'll make us the kind of watchmen we ought to be. Arise up now, open your mouth before the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I want to be that kind of watchman and you will not lose your reward. Stand up and close your eyes and pray and tell the Lord, be a watchman.